Hey guys, Georgia Soundtracks here. This week we're going to take a little trip back to basics and we are going to talk about CDs, bit structure, and what that means for you. So let's get started. <laughs> Now, first off, let's take a look at what a CV is. CV, first of all, stands for configuration variable. This allows you to make changes to the performance of the decoder. One of the biggest misnomers in all of model railroading when it comes to DCC is that you're actually programming the decoder which you're not actually programming the decoder, that's what our software engineers do. What you are doing is making adjustments to the performance of the locomotive based on the software programming our engineers have done. So a configuration variable allows you to vary or change the configuration, in other words, a setup of the decoder's performance. This is where you can decide which type of lighting effects you want. You can set the volume control. You can even adjust how fast the locomotive is going to go and how fast it's going to get there. These are all used by CVs. Now the term CV covers a basic structure and all CVs are structured exactly the same way, no matter what the purpose of the CV is. Whether you're talking about a volume percentage CV, such as 0 to 255 equals 0 to 100 percent, or another CV like, for example, CV29, which we'll talk about in a minute, or CV114 and their diesel decoders. Individual bits do various different things. Now, a CV is structured by eight bits, and each bit has a number. So it starts off at the right with bit zero, bit one, bit two, bit three, bit four, all the way up to bit seven, as you can see in this illustration. Now, each bit has a value or a weight associated with it. So bit 0 is worth 1. Bit 1 is worth a value of 2. Bit 2 is worth a value of 4. And bit 3 is worth a value of 8. And as you can see the pattern, the number doubles every time you move over to the next bit. Now what this does is this give, these 8 bits give you the unique ability to create any number with an addition of these numbers from 0 to 255. So zero would be all the bits in the off condition, and 255 would be all the bits in the on condition. So for example, if we're trying to create a bit value, you can see the value of 24 is, in, is constructed with the additions of bit number three worth a value of eight, and bit number four worth a value of 16. So the value of 24 is your CV structure or your CV value. Now again, every unique value between 0 and 255 can be created. So let's, for example, take a look at the value of 8, the bit number 3. Now when we add up all the numbers below it, 1, 2, and 4, we get a value of 7, which the next one is a value of 8. So that's how we work our way through the math. And then if we add the 8, the highest value we get is a value of 15. So this is how the CV structures are done, no matter what the case. Now, when we look at the individual CVs, you're going to see CV29 here in this illustration. Now, in CV29, you're going to see that the first bit, bit 0, is going to enable the forward direction. And what this does is this tells the decoder which facing direction is forward. So a lot of times, especially in diesel era, you saw that the forward was actually the long hood. So the long hood would move in the forward direction. But when you wire in the decoder, traditionally, the short hood is considered forward. So this allows you to select the performance of the decoder so that when you select forward with that locomotive, the next one is the speed step in bit one. And what this does is this actually tells the decoder whether it's in 14 speed step mode or 28 and 128 speed step mode. Now, this doesn't actually differentiate the decoder's performance when it comes to the actual speed steps. The decoder has over 2,000 internal speed steps to differentiate for the speed. But what you are doing is you're telling the decoder where in that uh, DCC signal you're going to find the headlight command. So the series of ones and zeros that are sent through the rails to our decoder have a specific order and the decoder expects it in this particular order. And what this is doing is making sure that your decoder, the order of the decoder ring, for lack of a better term, is matched up to the signal that's being sent. So traditionally, I always recommend running in 128 speed step mode. So bit number one, you'll want to be on. The next one is worth a value of four, bit number two. And this value of four enables analog mode. So if you want to have a decoder that runs both in analog mode and in digital mode, you can enable this bit. 
If you don't, you'd set it to zero and you move on. The next one is custom speed tables. And so custom speed tables, you'll see skips to bit number four. And so bit number four worth a value of 16 enables alternate speeds tables. Now in the Tsunami 2 and in the Economy, CD2, 5, and 6 are on by default. So you can quickly create a quick three-point speed table that way. But if you want to go in and create a more customized speed table and give you individual control over all 28 steps throughout the speed range, you would then want to enable this bit worth a value of 16. Now the last one is bit number five, and this is worth a value of 32. And 32 enables the long address, or the extended address, or the four-digit address, depending on which command station you're using. Now, the long address typically is the four-digit number that's written on the side of the cab. But in some cases, you're going to see some locomotives with using just the two digits on the side of the cab. And you can determine this for your own modeling and for your own operations. You can determine. But this is where you would select which address is active. So with CV29, the last two bits are not being used at all. So bit six and seven are not used at all, as is bit three. So we're just ignoring those completely, so it doesn't matter. So when you're going through the manual and you're looking at the chart for CV29, if you go to the user's guide, you'll see this chart. Now this is a complete breakdown of all five of those choices, yes or no, this or that, and this will show you exactly how to derive a value for CV29 but it's doing it in an illustrative purpose in a chart rather than having you turn on and off the individual bits. But this is essentially the same thing as what you're doing. Now, when it comes to other CVs, things like percentage of volume, zero to 255, the bits are structured exactly the same way and they're used exactly the same way, just the decoder interprets that information differently. Now, for more information on this, please visit our website at soundtracks.com. Be sure to check out the user's guide for more detailed information on how CVs are structured, how CVs are there, even including a CV bit calculator. So you can go in and turn on and off the individual bits to determine a value. Depending on your browser's capability, you should be able to use that CV bit calculator in the, in the user's guide to be able to calculate any value. And you'll be able to see quickly how that works. Now, if you have any further questions and you do, do now, if you have any further questions and you are confused, feel free to reach out to us at support at soundtracks.com or give us a call at the office uh, Monday through Friday, 9 to 530 Mountain Time, uh, 970-259-0690, extension 22.